Okay, in this video we're going to cover how to uh, start with building a basic object and work our way uh, through building the sword. Um, so uh, to learn how to use the polygon uh, tools we're going to start with the basic ones. Uh, so we're going to start with let's say the box and we'll build from there. So by clicking the box command right here, or the box tool, it pops a box in the screen. Uh, and so to spin the screen you hold the alt key and the left mouse button and you can start spinning the screen. To zoom in, use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And to pan the screen, you hold the Alt key and push the scroll wheel down and hold that. And now you can move left and right and up and down, which is different than using the left mouse button, which allows you to spin around. All right, so we have a couple ways of doing this. Uh, we can do lots of different methods, but I'm going to start with stretching it. So I'm going to go to uh, pressing R on the keyboard as a shortcut for scale, which is sitting right here. So this is uh, w, this is E and R for shortcuts, so move, rotate, and scale. I'm going to scale this on the green uh, box, which will pull this vertically upwards until it looks relatively long enough for a sword blade. And then I'm going to go to move right here for move command, that's W, uh, and I'm going to pull that up tall enough so that it's sitting above the grid, so just so it's not in the middle. And this will be our sword blade. Uh, so the first thing I want to do now is let's say I want to put a handle up here. So I'm going to go and grab uh, and pull the box up some more. So if you hold the right click, you can go to, uh, right now we're in object mode. We have edge mode, vertex, vertex face, face, multi, and UV. Um, so we're going to stick with, uh, for now, face mode on this one. So by going to face, we can, you see it highlights whatever face we're hovering over. If you left click it once, It'll, bring, it'll turn it orange, so that's the selected face now. So if I click this one once, that becomes the selected face. So I want to left click this once, so it's selected. And now I can go to the extrude command, which is sitting right here. Uh, extrude. If, you, if your um, interface looks a little bit different, you might be on a different tab, uh, such as general or curves. Uh, this one's the polygon tab, and I'm using the Maya LT, which is uh, a... Uh, Kind of a watered down version it's a cheaper version of maya also available from autodesk it's going to be the exact same program but it's going to have fewer buttons so if you see other buttons that aren't here that's because i'm using a um, more for independent game makers it's a cheaper version of buying maya so it has less features uh, but all the features we're going to use are going to be the same as the full version of maya um, all right so uh, to extrude you click the extrude command and once you've clicked that you see it creates this new interface that we can control. So the outside ring is going to be rotate, the boxes are going to be uh, scale, and by default is set on move. So if I were to grab the blue arrow and click and drag, I can pull it straight upwards. So now I've just moved it upwards. Um, I can keep doing a lot more things. I can move in other directions. I can rotate it by clicking that once, and now I can rotate this. Uh, so I can do lots of things, but right now I'm going to control Z to go back. I just want to pull it up that far. Now I want to repeat the last command, so I'm going to uh, click the extrude button again, and I can pull this up higher, and this will become the handle. So now I have the blade and the handle. Uh, so now I want to extrude out the two sides, so I'm going to grab this one, so it highlights it, then hold the shift key and click this side, so now I have both sides selected. So now I'm going to repeat the same command, extrude. The shortcut to repeat the last command is called G, as in like uh, girl. So you press G and it repeats your last command, which was extrude. If you take the blue arrow now, blue means go um, outwards, so both directions will extrude outwards. This is because we're in local coordinates. Uh, switching this mode will put it in world coordinates, so it moves the coordinate system. So I'm not going to use world, I'm going to use local, so that when I pull the blue arrow, they both pull out evenly. Alright, so now I have a cross, exactly what we're looking for, sort of maybe. Uh, so to continue on this to make the sword correctly, uh, we're going to hold the right click and go to object mode now. So now I'm off in object mode and I'm going to click off of it to get rid of the command for extrude. So I click back on here and now we're, we have a box. Uh, I want to pull the point out of the sword though, so I need to slice some more sections in here. Uh, the tool for that um, is going to be up here in the menu system. Um, you have to be in the modeling tab though. If you're in, let's say, rigging, you're going to have different options up here. And if you're in animation, you're going to have different options up here. So I'm going to make, uh, go to the modeling tab, so make sure you're in modeling. And the tool we're going to need is going to be under um, 
mesh tools, insert edge loop. And insert edge loop will allow us, or change the cursor to kind of like a pointy arrow, a little bit different than usual. And so I can click, let's say this one, uh, th this top edge, and as I'm clicking the left mouse button and holding it, it allows me to slide where I want this cutting line to go. So I release, and now I've cut this in half. And I can repeat this again if I want. So I'm going to click with the left mouse button and slide it left and right until I think I'm about centered. And that slices it again. So now that I've put two slices in here, I can go to, let's say, press W key on the keyboard. puts me back in uh, move uh, mode, which is right there. I'm going to right click and go to vertex mode now. And now that I've created two lines, I now have a point on the bottom of the sword. So now I can pull the sword point downwards. So I click on that once. And then I can pull it straight downwards to it looks like it's on the grid. So that's sort of sword sitting there. And it looks perfect. Like you can totally hurt someone like that. Uh, so we need to make some more adjustments. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is scale this one downwards. If I go to edge mode, I can click this one and this one. So holding shift, I can grab both those and they're both selected in orange. Now I can go to scale or on the keyboard or right there and take the blue arrow and I can push this inwards which will um, thin out the blade a little bit. Unfortunately it creates a dent right here so in order to resolve that dent if we don't want that I'm going to control Z back out of there and let's go back to mesh tools insert edge loop and I'm going to cut right up to there so now when I compress it it won't mess up the handguard. And let's repeat that so I'm going to Put one right here to, so the handle can turn round later. And then let's go back to move. So I click the move command. And let's go to, actually I want scale. So I'm going to click this one. Hold shift and grab this one. And I might as well do all the sides at once. So hold shift and grab that one. And hold shift and grab that one. So I have all four sides selected. And now I'm going to click the scale command. And I'm going to grab this one. Yellow means the most recently used one or the currently active one. So I'm going to click and drag it, otherwise it's usually blue, depending on the direction you built your sword at. Alright, and I've thinned that down. There still is a bit of a flat edge to the blade. I could keep going, but it's going to create overlapping lines, and I don't want the overlapping lines. So I'm going to hold the right click, go to vertex mode, and I'm going to grab these vertices. Uh, be careful that you don't grab too many. Uh, you can see here that I have too many selected. You could go one by one and grab them all. It's usually easier to drag across just the ones you need, but spin around the other side and make sure you didn't grab any ones that um, you don't necessarily need. All right, so once just those three are selected, you can also double check by going pressing four on the keyboard. This puts it in wireframe mode so you can see exactly which uh, points you're selecting. And five on your keyboard, will put this back in shaded mode. Uh, the shortcuts for those are right up here. So wireframe and shade is so four, five and six is going to be texture mode but we'll put this back on five all right so let's go over to um looks like it's uh yeah edit mesh i was looking at the vertex section it's actually in the component section they rearranged that all right so merge so we're going to click on merge and nothing's happening at the moment that's because our distance threshold is too high or too low actually we need to push that higher so slide it up until it looks like it clicks. So you can see I'm going left and right. And if it's too, too small, it doesn't do anything. And if you go high enough, it'll click. All right. And let's repeat that for the rest of them. So I'm going to grab this guy. And uh, also of note, what you could do is just grab a whole bunch of these at once. So I have a lot. And if your threshold is accurate enough, like this is close enough, it'll only click the closer ones. So if I go back to Edit Mesh, Merge, and... Um, click the options, which is that little box next to the side, I can adjust the threshold and apply it. So let's say it has 0.01, I press apply, and nothing happens. So let's slide it a little higher, 0.1, press apply, and boom, it snapped a bunch of them together. It might have snapped too many though, so I'm going to control Z that one, and slide it down a little bit more. So let's say 0.3, and apply, and it's still not quite working. Um, close enough, so it's control Z that, and go a little bit higher, say 0 0.06. Alright, looks like it's going too many, so we're going to do this one by one, it looks like. So I'm going to grab these three, apply, 
uh, grab these three, and you can do this in four, and wireframe might make it easier to see. Let's press apply, and grab these three, and press apply. Boom. And so now we've just merged our vertices together, so now they're just one line. Um, we might as well merge these as well. Uh, so you can do multiple different methods depending on how you want to merge those. But I'll just grab these two and press apply again. And I guess I could have done the other way and just done all at once. If I'm just going to end up doing that. Uh, Alright, so that uh, merges all those together. Let's press 5 on the keyboard, go back to shaded mode. And let's uh, go back to edge mode now. And we can see that the sword blade is a bit kind of thick. So let's click this edge and this edge. Let's go to scale and I can close this window now. So scale right here and I can scale the blade a lot thinner so it's more realistic to a sword blade. And now the handle's too big. Uh, but let's round this one off first. So I'm going to go to, I'm already in edge mode. Let's grab this edge, this edge, this one, and this one. And with all four of those edges selected, I can go to the middle scale button which will scale all of them. But by doing so it's going to create um, these kind of bumps on the side, so Control z that. I'm going to grab and scale on this one, so the green means it's going to grab the blue and the red at the same time, but not the other direction. So as I'm pulling this one and kind of making a rounded circle, you can see it doesn't mess with the top. So the top stays correct, and the rest of it rounds off for the uh, handle. Now let's go to face mode and put a pommel on the sword. So let's select all those in face mode. Let's go to extrude. And take the blue arrow, pull it up a little bit, and let's repeat the same command. Actually, let's um, let's scale that first. So click the uh, in order to scale, click the scale box once, and that turns this into scale mode now. And now I can scale this a little wider. And now let's repeat the last command, which is G on the keyboard. And now I'm back into extrude again, and I can pull this upwards, and then click the box again. That puts this in scale mode, and I can scale this smaller. And that uh, thins down the pommel. Uh, it looks like it didn't, it left it squarish, so I'm going to adjust that a little. Let's go into vertex mode. I'm going to grab this guy, this guy, this one, and this one, and scale them a little wider to kind of round out the top again. All right, so now we have a handguard. Uh, if the handle looks a little too large for you, you can go into face mode, grab all of these, and scale them on the green. And that'll thin down the handle a little more, so it's a little more uh, thinner. And then let's add a little detail to the handguard. So I'm going to go again to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, and let's put an edge loop right down the middle there, and right down the middle there. Uh, then they may not be super accurate, you can adjust it if you want to. Let's say we go to vertex mode, uh, and since we're still on the um, cut edge loop line, it'll still keep drilling lines, so in order to get out of that command, just click on something like the move tool, and then now uh, it cancels out of that command. Uh, for, for wireframe, I can look through and grab all of these lines, five back shaded, and I can adjust that line and slide it over a little more center. That's if you wanted to do that. Um, so let's go to, let's say, face mode. I could do this in wire or vertex mode also. Let's grab these. Let's move, actually, let's do both at once. I'll pull both sides down. And then let's bend it. So I'll rotate, but I can't rotate both at once. The blue line, we could use the yellow, but yellow is screen view and it could go crooked. So we'll use the blue air, the blue line. And if I do this, it kind of uh, does opposites. So let me just do one at a time. I'll grab, and sometimes you can't grab through the uh, rotation tool. So if you zoom in close enough, you can grab outside of it to get the other face. So let's rotate this downwards now and repeat. So grab this one, this one, rotate that downwards. So we have a little bit more of a angle to it. And I'm going to repeat here. So I'm going to go to vertex mode and they're already selected from last time. So let's rotate these a little and pull this down some. And let's grab all of these, make sure they're matching on both sides. Repeat again, rotate, and pull it down. So it's a little more curved, I suppose. And then we can also taper this. Let's uh, grab all of these, and hold shift and grab all of those. So these are all selected, R for scale. And I can pull this backwards, and kind of taper down the side of the 
uh, handle. Uh, if I wanted to go to do all of them, let's say I go to face mode and I grab all of these and holding shift, I can taper all of it down a little bit. And this way it's a little more narrower, I suppose. Um, and then let's add a little more tweaking. Let's go to vertex mode, grab through the shape so that I'm grabbing both sides. And then I can pull this down a little bit. And let's go to object mode. And more or less, we have a sword. It's kind of a simple sword and you can adjust this a bit more and uh, tweak it however you think it should go. Uh, now that you've done that, um, we might want to put some hard edges on here. You notice that everything's kind of roundish shape. Uh, sometimes you do have some hard edges, but in this case you have a lot of rounded ones. Uh, and the bottom down here also looks a little um, kind of off. It's not quite shaded correctly, and that's because it doesn't have those hard edges. So we can selectively go through and say which edges we want to be hard. So we grab this one, we'll go to edge mode, and I'm going to click this edge, which I want to have a hard edge to. Uh, might as well grab, actually let's hold shift and just grab all these on the bottom. They should all have hard edges. I'll grab this one as well. And you can see what happens if I go to mesh display under normals. We go to harden edge and that will harden the edge. So I click off of it and go to object mode. And you can see now there's a line coming down the blade where it used to be smooth across. Uh, there's now, and the normals, the um, black part has been fixed because it has the correct normals on there. And we can keep going through and hardening all the other edges that we think should be harder. So let's go to edge mode again. Let's say this one, this one, this one, this one. And then this one, this one, this one, this one. We have all those. We'll harden those edges. G to repeat the last command so they're hard. And if you double click a line, it'll automatically select everything in that circle rather than going one by one. Just double clicking it will continue through. We can G to repeat the last command to harden that one. We might as well do this one. And probably this one if it's not already. Actually, it might already be. And let's probably check on this one also. Um, one, two, three, four. G. All right. And then object mode. And you notice the handle also has a line hardened that we don't want it to be hard. So we can go to right click, face mode, select all of them, and then go uh, mesh display and soften edge and that'll take off the hard. So we soften it and now object mode, you can see that it softened it. Unfortunately by doing it through face mode it also softened back up what we had hardened earlier. Uh, instead of doing it by edge mode. So edge mode probably would be the better choice to have selected like that. Uh, but let me double click this again and this one again, and I'll just go back and reharden those edges. All right, and if you don't want all of these to be hardened up here, you can go through and go to edge mode again, let's grab all of these. I'll grab through it, grab all of these so they're all selected, and then soften that edge. Go to object mode, and you can see that we now have a rounded top and more of an angular handguard. And you can be a lot more um, interesting and artistic with this, however you wanted to go with this. Uh, this is just kind of basically showing you the buttons on how to start modifying geometry. All right, and I've selected those, and let's scale these in a little bit more. So I'll pull this down. All right, so that looks a little more interesting. I can pull this up a little if I wanted to. Cool. And that should cover how to build a basic sword and cover the basic tools of how to start modifying geometry. Uh, if I click back on this, um, notice here that we have a bunch of history that's been created on our object. Uh, we also have um, points right here. So when you're all done a model, usually you want to erase the history so that you don't have to worry about going back to it later. Uh, you can adjust things, but even if you were to go back to the first step where you could adjust your width and height and subdivisions, making any changes now is going to mess up your model. So if I set this to 2, you can see it will destroy the model. So you don't necessarily need the history. So control Z on that, um, because changing it will have bad effects. Sometimes you want to keep the history, but after modeling you generally don't need it. So to erase the history, you can go to Edit, Delete by Type, History. 
and that'll clear off that. And so now it's nice and clean right here. You have a finished model and you also have um, some of these which you don't necessarily need also. Uh, these will put the object back in the original position. Uh, but since we like the position it's in right now, we can go to uh, Modify Freeze Transformations and that'll clear out these values. So now your object has all zeros and no history, so it's a final finished piece. Uh, we can move this around anywhere, and you can see that it changes those numbers, but if I ever go back and type zero over top of those, it'll put it back in the original place that it was created at. And that covers how to model our sword. Um,